Welcome to How Preschool Teachers Do It. This is Allison Kentos. I am an early childhood educator. And this is Cindy Tarabush. I am an early childhood consultant. This podcast is for parents and early childhood professionals. Let our experience and research-based knowledge become your guide. Happy Monday of what is some people's spring break, preschool peeps. Happy Monday. <laughs> we we <laughs> recognize, break. right? We recognize yeah. you may be listening to us after your spring break and that's okay too. That's okay too. Yeah. <laughs> the, the topic for this week is one we sort of hinted at last week mm-hmm. that we were going to talk about um, ways to spend more one-to-one time with children. Yeah. And so yeah. we're going to talk about a method that's actually been done, especially for children who exhibit challenging behavior, but Honestly, I think we're going to have to do it with everybody in the next year, two years, three years, because what's going to happen is we're going to get children in our settings who only know the pandemic life. I said this to a teacher this week. I said to her, she was talking about the social emotional needs of the children this year. And I said, I don't think we've seen anything yet. I said, in the next Mm -hmm. two, three years, we're going to be getting children in our settings who only know pandemic life. And some of them have been on lockdown and not had play dates and not yeah. gotten together with cousins and not had the sort of socialization that we would expect children entering our settings to have already had. Yeah. So I think actually the next school year, if we're looking forward to the next school year and the year after that could present its own challenges. I think that's true. Cause it's not something I really thought about. I never really thought, I, I just concentrate on the kids I have now. Yeah, yeah that's why people pay me, Allison. That's why I'm I know, right? Home. That's what you get. You make the big bucks. <laughs> I just I have to teach think ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, just, I, I have the I have the wider yeah. view, right? Yeah, whereas I have like my my small yeah. world view kind of like yeah. I need to worry about my 19 kids that are in my class, who I will say I feel like the, the pandemic is starting, you're starting to see a little bit of the effects, I feel, of like those lack of play dates and stuff. Because those kids also they know what it's like to have play dates and now they know what it's like not to, you yeah. know, but I do agree with this whole, like, we're going to have kids coming into settings that this was, this has been a lot of their life that they remember. It's been like, their childhood. And, yeah. uh, and I, you know, I, I think that we have to respond to that. And, and again, like all joking aside, part of my role as a consultant is to be thinking ahead so that I can help to guide teachers. Yeah. And administrators, as we move into what a lot of people are just calling the next phase of early education in this era, because it's we're going to go through phases. I think that we do need to take some of these practices that are done with children who have exhibited challenging behaviors in the past, children who have special education needs, children who have struggled a bit with their social emotional skills and bring it into all realms of teaching now and not just leave it in its little silo to be done with certain types of children. (laughs) One of those methods that we wanted to talk to you about on this call is called banking time. I don't know how many people who've worked with children or raising children have heard of it. So I want to introduce it to you uh, because again, it's been mostly used uh, in the realm of children who need support with their behavior. Mm -hmm. But we have to think about how can we prioritize our days now to expand this? So here's what it is. Um, First of all, I want to give credit where credit is due. This isn't a Cindy or Allison idea. Uh, Banking time is an evidence-based strategy. And it was developed by someone named Dr. Robert Pianta, Dean of the Curry School of Education at the University of Virginia. So he gets all the credit for developing and researching this Mm -hmm. evidence-based system. Uh, And it's called banking time because his proposal and his evidence shows that when we make deposits of time into our relationship bank, we can draw on that later. What it has shown for children who exhibit challenging behaviors is if I spend very intentional one-on-one time with you, just me and you, and me following your lead, I'm developing a relationship and putting those moments in a bank And I can withdraw from that relationship account when you are struggling because our relationship will connect us. Does that make sense, Allison? It does make sense. Okay. So that's why it's called banking time. We are spending time now to be able to use it in the future. I I know that it works with children who exhibit that challenging behaviors. 
I think it will work with everyone going forward because we are gonna have to work even harder on developing our relationships with children who now are not as familiar as de with developing multiple relationships. That relationship building is gonna take more intention and time. Here's how banking time works basically. And you all are gonna see me looking down, I'm referring to my notes because I don't wanna get this wrong. It's really important. That's so, um, important. <laughs> so the way that it has worked in the past is that teacher set up approximately 10 to 15 minute one-to-one -one play sessions with children, often not in the classroom setting where all the other children can interrupt, but maybe out in the hallway mm -hmm. or in another space that may be available if there are enough adults available. Otherwise, a part of the classroom has to be designated only for our banking time area so that children learn not to interrupt when you're over there. But it would be really great if you could like sit in a hallway and do this with the children. Yeah. Traditionally, it's done two to three times a week because we're doing it with particular children. However, if we're talking about doing it with a whole class, these are some of the things that may have to be adapted. May not be so evidence-based, but I still think as a consultant can have a lot of merit, right? So you're taking 10 minutes maybe with everybody in your class a couple times a week or once a week depending how many students you have in your class and what your situation is, and you are following their lead. So you provide them with a choice of things to do. They decide what to do. We follow and observe them. And that definition of observing when we're talking about banking time is that we are carefully watching and taking mental note of the children's behavior, words, feelings, our own thoughts and feelings while we're interacting with them, because this is the basis for developing relationship. So this is different than when we are observing children for our ongoing assessment tools. Yeah. This is, I'm trying to figure out who you are. I think it's what we naturally do when we meet new people, right? We feel them out. How do yeah. they react? How do they, what are, how they do doing? I feel around these people? Yeah. yeah. How do I <laughs> yeah. feel? It's sort of that process. But yeah. while we're doing that, we're going to narrate. And this is something that we've talked about on this podcast before, that when we're playing with children, we need to talk about what they are doing out loud. Oh, I see you're building with the blocks. We are, that is called parallel talk. Um, in this system, it may have a slightly different name, but it's parallel talk. So that we're saying what we see. We're also narrating what we do and how it attaches to what the children are doing. Um, and we're imitating what they do. So if they pick up a toy and use it a certain way, we're going to do the same thing. Doing all three of those things and letting the children lead and us saying what they're doing, saying what we're doing that has to do with what they're doing and imitating what they're doing, what that communicates to young children is, I'm actually seeing you. Yeah. I'm actually seeing you. I am paying attention to you. And I am seeing just you. That's the message I, they get. I found the repeating their motions part very interesting because to me, it's like, instead of me being over here building blocks and they're building blocks, something different, like in a different way, right. it kind of shows that their movements, their thoughts, their ideas have value, like so right. much value that I'm over here doing the same thing. That's how important your movement and your process in this movement is. You know, you building with square Legos rather than, and me being over here building something different is just like, yeah, we're, we're spending time together, but it's not showing that child that there is value and merit to what they are doing. Right. I, I found it right. very interesting. It is very interesting. Yeah. And here's, here's another piece to this banking time. You can't just put out toys and go in there and go, well, you know, I'll do whatever happens. You actually have yeah. to go in with a theme for your meeting in mind. So again, you're having individual meetings scheduled. The children know yeah. today I'm banking time with you today. That's not a surprise. Yeah. They know they have an appointment. It's basically, they're making appointments with us <laughs> every That's week so cute. to spend yeah. time just <laughs> with us, right? It's your yeah. personal appointment. And when I think about it as a parent, I have two children. There were times when I had appointments with my kids where a certain day was a day when I was going to spend time with one child or the other. My husband did the same, right? We banked yeah. time with our children by developing these one-to-one -one relationships that it wasn't always 
both children together. Sometimes it was just me and Michael. Sometimes it was just me and Scott. And sometimes it was all of us together. So it kind of mirrors that, that though I think probably when I was raising my children, I could have done it a little more intentionally, like I'm about to describe. Right, but so, I feel like we didn't know about this back then. We didn't know. So, so okay. here, here are some of the potential and what they're calling potential themes for banking time. You have to decide ahead of time what message you want to convey to the child through this interaction. And here are some examples. One message would be, I'm here for you. So you have to think yeah. about how would I communicate that? Um, yeah. How can I be helpful to the child while they're doing something, right? I'm here for you. Another message is, I accept you which is sort of like what you were saying, Alison, whatever they do, yeah. I'm going to do. I accept yeah. you, I accept right? You. Yeah. Another message is you are safe with me. So it yeah. might be that they're trying new things and with the toys or whatever, and we're making that okay. Or they're, we're talking with them in a way that we encourage them to try yeah. new things. Yeah. I love this next one. The next one is adults are helpers. What a great yeah. theme to go into a discussion with a child, right? right? Yeah. A couple of the other ones that I have right in front of me are, I am, I am paying attention to you. So again, it's that imitating. Yeah. And yeah. another one is, I'll be there when times are tough. I think that's a really, really important one. Because it's not just like we say, hey, I'm here for you. You could talk to me when you need to. I think showing it through this banking time proves right. that what you say is what you're going to do. You know, and then they start to trust you more. So when times do get tough, they're going to come to you. You know, instead of being like, I don't have anyone, you know? Right, right. Yeah. But you have to go into the conversation knowing what's the theme of today's yeah. banking time with this child. What do I want to make sure to convey through my communications and through my actions so that yeah. I'm building, and these are building blocks of relationship. I'm here for you. I accept yeah. you. You are safe. I can help you. you. I'm paying attention to you. I'm a good listener and I'm actively yeah. listening. And I'll be here when times are tough. Isn't that what friendship is? That's what friendship is. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know that we intentionally um, communicate that in our communications with children. And don't you think now, Allison, and you're working with kids every day, don't you think they need these messages even they more now? They absolutely do. They absolutely do. Like times are different than they used to be. I mean, they always needed to hear this, but now it's like, we're going through a spot here, you know, yeah. like, so, so to hear, like, I'm here for you and I accept you for who you are. And no matter what you're going through, I'm going to be here to help you. They need that because if this happens again, where we lock oh. down, oh, who are they going to have, please. you know, so it's like, they need that. Yeah. Let's not hope that, but let's just say <laughs> they need that for their whole lives, you know, their whole lives. I'm not going to go, I'm not going to go into the banking time session with a child and say, listen, today's theme is you no, are safe no. with me. So here's what yeah. we're going to do. That's not what we're doing. We're yeah. thinking to ourselves, here's the message I want to convey through my yeah. actions and yeah. whatever words I use to su support like what the yeah. child is doing. Right. Yeah. So this is the message you're going in with an intentional message. Here's the message I'm trying to convey. It kind of reminds me of when things happen, like, um, I don't know, somebody it's struggling with a death in their family. And I know I'm going to be talking with them as an adult, adult to adult. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think to myself, well, I'm going to have to have this tough conversation with my friend. And really, yeah. I want to just convey the message that I'm here for them. And so yeah. you're aware, I become you're more aware. aware of what I'm saying to make sure I don't say things that give the opposite message. It's kind of like yeah. that. Right. Right. I love the fact that you're going in with that sort of intention, but you're following the lead of the children. Yeah. So yeah. the question I think becomes, I think, I think I could be wrong here because sometimes I'm wrong about what other people think, but I think that <laughs> most people would say, yeah, you know, that banking time thing would probably be great from now and forever. What a forever. Yeah, why would we, yeah. developing relationship, <laughs> right? And, and, yeah. and understanding that we've learned a lot about the importance of one-to-one -one connections over the past year. So we have to reemphasize these methods and maybe take them and adapt them for all different situations. Yeah. And I, I think um, most people would agree, but, but I also think most people I'm picturing the teachers that I work with and they would say to me, I've got 15 kids in here and a curriculum mm -hmm. to do. How do you I, expect me to do that? Yeah. I've had that thought. I mean, I have 19 kids in my class and mm -hmm. a curriculum also, 
I'm and pulling out a calculator. I'm actually calculating but the time. I will say like now I, I have taken children into, we have empty classrooms now, you know, because mm-hmm. COVID we had to consolidate or whatever. So I'll sometimes take a kid during my lunch hour, you know, be like, Hey, you want to eat lunch with me? And we'll just like hang in there and talk. And then while I'm there, like if they're struggling with something in math or reading or something, I'll go over it in that little session. But what I love about this banking time is I was doing it with kids who were having like challenges, you know, like usually how it's behavioral or academic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was doing it that like we'd have like one-on-one time alone in this classroom that like nobody else is in just me and the person and that's it. But it's saying like, it's equally important to do it with the children who aren't having struggles, you know, like just to bank that time with them is equally important. Like, so like, yeah, like I was doing it with the kids who were struggling, but I should do it with all of them. Right. You know, so I think we should, I think we need to consider it. So you have, you said, I took out my, my smartphone calculator. You have 19 kids, right? Yeah. So let's say you were going to devote, you were going to make appointments with them to bank time every week. What do you think? How many times a week would you like to do it with your kids? At least twice. Twice a week. At least. Right. 19 kids. Yeah. Twice a week. So that's times two. And then we take that number, we go times 10 minutes a piece, right? Like, let's do the average. So that's 380 minutes divided by 60 minutes in an hour. We're talking about six hours a week. So it's virtually yeah. a li- a, like a little over an hour a day, a day. Yeah. That you would need to devote to this. Yeah. In your it's, class and other people class. can do the same math and figure it out. Yeah. Is it actually possible for me to do this twice a week, which would be great. Do I need to just really, do I have more students and less days? Some preschool settings are there three days a week. Do I need to do this um, maybe once a week with everybody? Mm -hmm. It's probably more important to do it once a week with everybody than not everybody get a turn, you know? Yeah, I would want to do it once a week with everybody. Or or another decision could be I'm going to bank seven minutes per child instead of 10 minutes per (laughs) child because then it works out. I don't know, yeah. however, however it is you want to do it. You know, I think yeah. about therapists when your time's up, it's up. It's up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if anybody's That's ever true. been, I'm looking over at a document. If people see me on YouTube looking over, yeah. if anybody's ever been in, in a therapy situation, you know, when time's up, you're done. I'll it's, use. it's done. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that we can teach children that we have a certain amount of time. Yeah. And that's when it's your well, turn to spend with me. Yeah. And, and when it's- I, I like, I like the appointment thing. Like your day is every Tuesday at 10 o'clock or whatever it is. And no matter what kind of day you are having or whatever kind of day that child is having, that's mm-hmm. your time. You know, whether it's, they're having a great day or they're having a really bad day, you still meet with that child at the time. And I think that teaches them like, I can rely on you. Like, Mm -hmm. this is my day and my time and I can rely on you no matter what. If I'm having a really bad day, she's still going to meet with me at 10 o'clock on Tuesday. You know, I mean. What if Tuesday's a holiday? Right. See, you got to. We have to, see, I, this is, these are the things I have to ponder. These are things I have to ponder before I really talk to teachers one-on-one about it. What if it's, what if it's, what if it's not a time, right? But you go in like an order. You go in the same order. So if you're off a day. The order just, yeah, that it just goes work. to the next. Yeah. Yeah. And if teachers are wondering when I'm looking at an article, I'm looking over to my right on you. Oh, YouTubers. Um, because <laughs> I have an article over on my other monitor and it says when, when, because most teachers are going to look at me and go, when, here's what the article says sure. about this. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. says select an already existing time from your school day during which you will regularly implement the intervention and decide how long your sessions will be. So maybe you want to do this. Let's say you have a schedule in an early childhood setting where you have your 60 minutes of free choice in the morning and another 30 Mm -hmm. minutes in the afternoon. Maybe you take half the time in the morning and the other half you're in free choice with everybody. And then the other 30 minutes in the afternoon. Okay. It's an existing time of day. The children are free playing. Yeah. Right. We're not saying you have to add hours onto your school day and that's impossible. And I'm also not saying take time out of your prep time. I'm not saying don't take, don't no. take prep time. So we have yeah. to figure out how to fit this in. But some of this may be that we have to help people to prioritize, which is yeah. prioritize, prioritize, prioritize. I feel like that's all I say now when I'm talking to educational setting. Yeah. You can do 
several things really well, or you can do a thousand things really poorly. And I think that we really need to sit at this juncture and decide some priorities. Yeah. Again, we can talk about some of that on this podcast. Yeah. Um, how we're how we're starting to view priorities as we head toward the next school year. Yeah. yeah. I think banking time has to be a priority, as particularly in the beginning of the school year. It's, yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially, you know, we yeah. spend so much time in the beginning of the school year. We should anyway, introducing children to the schedule, the setting, getting things, getting them into a routine. And I think Routines, that banking yeah. time with them just can help them feel so much more comfortable, so much quicker. So much secure. Yeah. So like much quicker than how we've done yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I hope that people who are listening to this make it a goal and not just in schools, folks. Hi, parents. I wish I would have done more of this intentional <laughs> yeah. thinking yeah. when my kids were little. Yeah. You know, I, I think that I conveyed these messages to them because they're adults and we have a good relationship. I wonder, especially during the tougher teenage years, how laying a foundation like this when they were early learners might have helped us through some of the tougher teenage yeah. times, you know? Yeah. I wonder that. I mean, it's... But if you, you, you parents out there, you can lay that foundation now. You can. And, and, you then, can, yeah. and let's say you do spend time like I did, where you're intentionally of multiple children, you're spending time with each child individually. That's awesome. Maybe yeah. think about these messages. Maybe think about, well, when I spend time with my child today, this one child of mine, yeah. here's what I want. The theme in my head is this. The theme in my head is, and yeah. so we're going to let the child, if you're doing this at home, by the way, you don't pick what they're doing. The children do. They do. So the yeah. children decide, you have to say to them, what do you want to do? It's our afternoon together. Yeah. What do you want to do? And anything within reason you have to do. It's reminding me of a movie. It's that's like yes day. Yes day. Yes. yes. Day? It's reminding yeah. <laughs> me of, folks, if you haven't seen yes day, I think it's on Netflix. We're going to do a shameless plug for a movie. We have nothing to do with. I haven't um, even seen it yet, but I've heard of this concept of yes I day. Some of my it. friends have done this with their kids where they're like, yeah. everything goes kind of thing. Yeah. And it kind of shows you like, what your kids really want. Cause you expect it to be like, Oh my God, I'm going to spend a million dollars at like a theme park or something. But it turns out like a lot of times they're not asking for that. They're like, I just want to spend time with you all day or I want to do this. And it's just like amazing. I haven't well, seen I'm the movie. So I don't know if that's what it's movie. about, but I'm not going to yeah. talk about Yeah. See, Allison hasn't seen it. I'm not going to talk I about seen it. what yeah. happens in the movie. I'm just going to say to people, if you're interested in what it may look like when you just say yes to kids, go watch yesterday. Yeah. Um, I, I, I have had with my children, parents who are listening may relate to this. I've had yes moments for sure. My, my, one of my sons and I, (laughs) it was at a time when there, we wanted a particular type of shake from a particular business and there was none near us. And we literally, we looked at each other and said, yeah, let's go. It was like yes day. And we literally drove like an hour and a half to get a milkshake. It was insanity. But the it's such a good memory. Like, look is. at you we smiling about, about, about it. it. And I'm sure your son still smiles about it too. <laughs> yeah. I have one like that benchmark. in my family. Yeah, yeah that's my, your benchmark. Go yeah. ahead. My dad one day, it was the middle of winter and he goes, I think we should go swimming, All right? I go, yeah, I don't think so. And then he goes, just ask me. I go, can we go swimming? He goes, yeah, let's go swimming. We drive from New Jersey to a hotel in the Poconos that had an indoor pool just so we can go swimming in the winter. Now it was, now it was his idea, but the fact that he was like, you need to ask me. And if I didn't ask him, he probably would have been like, nah, we're not going. But since I asked him, he goes, yes. And it was like his way of saying like, there's sometimes you're going to ask me something and I'm going to say yes, even if that thing is like the wackiest thing you can think of, you know, and it gave me like, now, now I wasn't afraid to ask him, you know, like the answer might be yes, but the answer also might be no. Like, so it was like, um, but I remember that. And I remember swimming in the middle of the Poconos. One of the things about banking time, it's all like a tiny little 10 minute yes day. What they choose to do as long as no one is going to get hurt, we're going to do it. So if you're setting up in the hallway, I would encourage you to tell the children to bring whatever they want out. Yeah. I wouldn't even, you know, now that I think about it, I wouldn't preset anything. I would say to them, you get to pick what you're bringing out here. It's, it's part, part of banking time is we're following their lead and they, 
so that we're yeah. sending the message that you are seen and heard kind yeah. of like what your dad did and yeah. I, I think that just doing this when we think about it I mean think back folks about when people have said yes to you in that way and then really paid attention to what you were doing had meaningful conversations with you think about the relationship building that that was yeah, yeah. So now everyone's going to get off of this podcast episode and think, how can I bank time? Yeah. Not only with my current students, but intentionally plan this in my schedule for next year. year. And maybe for summer, by the way, if you have a summer program, Mm -hmm. uh, don't ignore your summer program. I know summer programs of the past in a lot of places have been very much like, okay, it's summer. We're just going in the sprinklers, but no, we need to do some intentional work this year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it could still be lots of fun, but it, there needs to be some intentional work done. Yeah. All right. That's the assignment, right? That's the assignment after yeah. this podcast. Is think like, about how you go. can yeah. <laughs> bank <laughs> time go out with, and- with your students. Maybe listen to this episode a couple of times so that you get all the themes and the different yeah. types of talk. Um, and then hopefully decide how to do this. And maybe it will have a really positive impact. Yeah. You know, that yeah. would be wonderful if it had such a positive impact. It would impact. be. I don't know if that's how Dr. Pianta would agree. I don't know if the person who came up with this would agree with what I'm saying about how to adapt it, but you know, the world has changed. Yeah. But I feel like you kind of almost have to adapt it a little bit. If it, if that's how it's going to work in your life. Like, I think it's more important to to make it work. Yeah. Right. And we have to take these methods and say, okay, what's worked in smaller populations of kids who have struggled because right. now a much larger population of kids have struggled. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I, th- and we'll continue to talk about that sort of thing as we yeah. head toward the next school year and, and start to experience it together. Yeah. You know, building the plane as we fly it folks, all of us yes. still. Yes, we are. Yes, <laughs> we most yeah. certainly are. We are. <laughs> uh, we are going to um, encourage you to let us know how it goes. You're thinking about banking time. And if there are any other methods that you've ever used with children that you feel like, oh, that should be expanded to everybody now too, please share. Yeah, please let us know. Please, please let us know. Yeah. We'd be happy to share. We, we wish you hope as we head into the spring, our second spring holidays in a pandemic era. Um, but, but okay, you know, okay. I'm going to try not to be upset about that. Try, try not to think about that, but yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But there's hope on the horizon. Yeah. This, this feels more hopeful than last year at this time. So we're just confusing last year. I sat and said, all right, so we won't get together this year so that we can be together next year. And look, it's next year and we're still not all together, but now there's real hope. There is hope. Yeah. So we wish you all that hope. And um, a really good, whatever you're celebrating in what the next you're couple of celebrating, weeks, right? Yeah. And and we will we will be back though with another episode. We're not going anywhere. Yeah, we're still here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am here for you. See, that's one of the themes. Oh, See, we banged time with them. <laughs> okay. Time. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like I feel like we're hokey enough now. So we're gonna just sign off <laughs> and catch you next time on the podcast, folks. Bye, peeps. Thank you.